Hello everybody and welcome to the blue edition of our Battle for Zendikar complete set review. I am Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson. And we are here to talk about all those blue cards. We're going to start right now with Adverse Conditions. Adverse Conditions is a blue and three colorless instant with Devoid. It has no color. And it taps up to two target creatures. Their controller, their creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. You put a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield. It has Sacrifice Me. Add one colorless to your mana pool. So it's one of the best tap down cards I've really ever seen. Yeah, and 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 that's really what where the theme is. The set like it's the best fog I've ever seen. This is the best tap down effect I've ever seen mm -hmm. because it does so many things that the tap cards usually don't. Like you can instead of tapping their creatures before they attack, mm -hmm. you can like tap their blockers and then use the 1-1 one, one to block something and they think they can deal lethal but they're actually not going to. Right. Um, and it can also like stop three creatures when you're really far behind trying to race with creatures in the air or whatever. Yeah. So I mean, you tap down their like huge monsters and you have a chump blocker. You tap down their huge monsters and now you have mana acceleration in blue. You know? Like yeah, I mean, yeah, you one. tap down their stuff on turn four and play a six drop, and then the, and then that six drop gets a turn to attack wow. before they get to untap to deal with it. So I, I think that this card's very good, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to see it in play. I don't exactly know where and when because I don't know how this format works, but... <laughs> we know, <laughs> we know enough. That's right. Yeah. So, but it's but it's very good, and I think this card is extremely powerful. It is an uncommon, so you're not gonna be able to see a lot of it. But I want to play basically every copy they'll give me as powerful as this card seems. Mm -hmm. Which, no, which I, is great. I completely agree. I like this card a lot. I love it. Now we have anticipate next. Anticipate is a blue and a colorless instant. It's a common. You look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, and the rest on the bottom. This is a reprint. This is the new brainstorm while not being brainstorm but it lets you look at the top three cards and get one of them it doesn't let you put them back or it doesn't let you draw the three cards either which sometimes matters yeah i mean yeah it's a reprint i i'm not the biggest fan of when they reprint cards that are still in standard mm -hmm. like we saw it with dragon fodder now we see it with anticipate and i mean that's just what they do but it's it's boring to me because like you can give it back to me in two years and it's something that i haven't played with for a little bit but if right. it's like already in the set not only is it like for standard it's 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 already here i don't need another version of it but it's also like i love magic for the puzzle that you get to like try to build and try new cards out and not know actually how good they are mm -hmm. and we get to argue about them well we know how good anticipate is we've played with it we understand it right so like what what else do i say about it like we've been here it sometimes sees playing control decks it's probably going to see a little bit more play because the format's a little slower and like the counter spells are a little bit better on two because mm -hmm. you have Slumgar Scorn and then we're going to get to the uh, other good counter spell here shortly. Sure. But at the end of the day, been here, done that. Let's move on. Well, I mean, you have, but like, how how playable is this card for those who haven't played with it? Who who those who are just like, well, is Anticipate good? Do I play all the Anticipates I get? What it, you if you have like Wrath effects or more controlling effects, it's a control card. So if you have Wraths or cards that you're digging for or bombs that are unbeatable or very um, like synergistic style decks where you need th pieces to come together that aren't really tempo based like allies. You're not going to dig for allies. You'd just rather have more allies to cast mm -hmm. than an anticipate because paying two mana to find a card co makes that spell cost two more mana. You know, effectively, because you have to cast Anticipate to find the card. Hmm. It does give consistency to decks when you need lands and stuff like that. And playing one copy and sealed is fine, because right. the games are you, you don't really have early curves anyway. Right. Um, but for the most part, I don't think that the card is that great. It's better in sealed than in draft, but you don't want to play every copy. Like playing one Anticipate is fine. Okay, fair enough. So it's one of those you don't really, well, you won't want to binge on it, but you want to play it if it works in your deck. Yeah, if you like are a 17 land deck but kind of think you want to be a little bit more than 17 you can play an anticipate and it's it's kind of an extra land because sometimes when you keep two lands anticipate you're going to find a third land pretty easily sure okay so it's not as exciting as it could be but okay it's fine moving on we have benthic infiltrator a blue and two colorless one four with devoid and ingest and it can't be blocked so this seems to be a very important part of getting the uh, sort of processors going. You want to start ingesting things. You want to be able to get this guy in. He is unblockable, which is good. You can put counters on him. You can put equipment on him. He can, you know, be assured to to connect. And sometimes that's really terrific. But ultimately, I think this is part of, you know, this is the piece of the puzzle that you need to start putting together for your Eldrazi deck to really work. Yeah, and well, there's I think there's two different Eldrazi decks. Much like there's the Life Gain and the Rally decks, where they can 
sometimes intertwine and sometimes uh, be separate. Mm -hmm. This is the processor uh, Eldrazi deck and, and, and a main key part of that deck. And then there's the put a lot of spawn into play, try to cast big spells deck. Right. I, I might be wrong on that, but I feel like that's where it's at. Like the, there's two different Eldrazi themed decks, but this one, this is a main player in the deck because it's a guaranteed way to ingest. Mm -hmm. So if you get a lot of copies of it, it's going to come down on turn three, probably be able to block mm -hmm. because it has such a high toughness and then start attacking for one. And the one damage is relevant, but getting to start uh, exiling cards from their library means that all of your processors are going to turn on really easily. Right. And it's on curve with a lot of the really powerful ones. Yeah. So, like, you're going to play it on three, and then there's a lot of good four drops and five drops. Like, the four drops mean return one card. The five drops return two cards. So this card just on curve is always going to make those, on like, really good. So I think, like, this is a high pick if you get it in your shield pools. Like, if you have two of them in a shield pool and a couple other ingesters, like, you can definitely play the processor deck. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, these are the draft high uh, picks for that theme. But Excellent. you don't have to aggressively take them. I think that the processor deck, since we're on the first one, I want to get a lot of it out there, is a deck that you want to come to you. Mm -hmm. So like while you're drafting, if people are starting to pass this, take them. But like first picking and trying to force a strategy like this is so synergistic that it might fail if somebody else is to your right doing it. So I would just take all the good removal spells first and then fall into the deck that other that people aren't drafting. But I want to I want to force things. I like the processor deck. I think it sounds great. Well, yeah, take the rare processor if it's really good and see if you get the uh, ingest stuff. But force I used to force in uh, decks and it's so much worse than just letting something fall into your lap. Right. It's it's tough to make it's tough to make the fetch happen is what you're trying to tell yeah. me. Yeah. Sometimes exactly. fetch has to come to you. Yes, fetch does have to come to you. <laughs> So we have Brilliant Spectrum, which is next, and this is a classic example of a card that is insanely exciting until you get to the last line of it. You have a blue and three colorless sorcery with Converge. You're drawing X cards. Buddy, I'm already on board. We're drawing X cards where X is the number of colors of mana spent to play it. Oh, yes! And then right at the end, it's like, whoop, here comes the rug because you discard two cards. And it's like, um, I don't yeah. like this card anymore. Yeah, the discard clause makes this completely unplayable and limited. I just maybe converge is a thing in limited, but I don't think it is. It doesn't feel that way. And again, it's like so if you're going to play your two color decks, which is kind of the norm for limited, you're going to pay four mana to draw two and discard two, and that's just not an effect you need to pay four mana for. No, and so not a fan. I could see maybe doing some graveyard shenanigans in standard might mm -hmm. be good. Like this plus Jays can set up a solar flare style deck or maybe like a delve style deck mm -hmm. but uh at the most place like i just don't think that this card's good yeah it just doesn't feel good and i just uh it just feels bad and that's okay there's bad cards to make good good cards look good and this is one of yeah. them cloud menta uh our snapping drake our blue and three colorless three two flyer always good always playable i want every copy i can get it's as it's as high on the curve as a blue flyer gets yeah, I mean, it's just, it's very good. Play it always, play it often, whatever your saying is. Yes. Play it often, play it always. Yes, we have, you know, we and we, I mean, you know, just, there's so many times where we've gotten to a snappy trick and we're just like, what do we say? It's great. Play it in your deck. This, this one at least shows a lot of the hedrons in the background, which is pretty sweet. Like, is is that the, like, I have a question about the lore of, of Zendikar. Okay. Are the hedrons, um, like, back when Zendikar first came out, I could care less about the flavor. Like, I was like, I'm a pro magic player and have to take everything super seriously. Everything's then I realized you can just, yeah, then you can just try to be good and just still be a pro magic player, but just like everything about magic. Sure. And now I love it, and but, like, I don't even know the, the hedron... Theme. Did the Hedron just fall from the sky? Uh, just one day they were like like comets? They were used to house and jail the Eldrazi. I don't really sure where they came from, per se. Oh, okay. and, I, and I don't know why they're like floating around in the Aether now. Maybe they just got burst out to pieces. It's one of those things where like I was this, I was very much similar to yourself. It's only in the last couple of years where I think wizards themselves have made a real push to make the lore of the of the game important and interesting and impactful. That people yeah, actually start playing, you know, start paying attention to it. And back then it was just like, all right, cool. There's like these weird things and there's these crazy huge dudes and whatever. Let's just play some cards. And so now... One day the Kami came out of these doors and attacked people. And, <laughs> yes. And Konda did something and he had a hound and it was a big scary dog and blah, blah, blah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but Cloud Manta is a flying fish and you play that flying fish. 
You yeah, play flying good. fish. Fish have just been doing a lot of things lately in Magic. They yeah. love the term fish. Fish, fish, fish. Now, Clutch of Currents is a blue sorcery. One blue sorcery. It's a common to return target creature to its owner's hand. However, this unsummon has awakened three for a blue and four colorless and is so good and is so pushed. Would not be surprised to see this thing in standard. Oh, I think it will see standard play. Uh, we just need a tempo deck, and tempo decks are always the most difficult to actually build. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to know the speed of the format, like what you're actually trying to answer at certain times. But we have, and I forgot, uh, Harbinger of the Tides Sure, is like a really good tempo blue card that could go well with Clutch of the Currents, or right. cl Clutch of Currents. And uh, I also just love that early game, it's fine to cast because Jace, like cards like Jace, are going to want time. Mm -hmm. to build up and then it, it works well dig through time and all this like shenanigans and maybe clutch is actually the one drop that just guy tokens has been looking for sure you know but in the late game when when resources are limited you can just pay five mana and get a three three out of it and like that's a that's an ogre savant that was one of the best cards of of zendikar or not zendikar Ravnica. Ravnica. yeah yeah, and so this is somewhat a little bit worse than that when you pay the mana because you're sacrificing the land for it. But, like I said earlier, landfall and because of how uh, Zendikar block works, you're going to want to play extra land. So, like, you, you normally play 17 land decks. In this format, you're going to want to play 18 land decks constantly. Sure, and if you're playing, you know, like, yeah, Ogre Savant was a was a 5 mana red card. It was a 3-2, and if you had blue, when you paid blue while casting it, it could also bounce a creature when it entered the battlefield, and that was great. It was a, it was one of the all-stars of that limited format, and this, to me, seems almost, it seems very constructive playable because, A, there's always the 1 mana option, and if you're the tempo deck and you have 5 mana, you're, you're fine giving up your land because... Because now mm -hmm. you have a 3-3 three, three instead, and you bounce their guy, and you're able to attack with the rest of your dudes. Yeah, I think this card's very good. Yeah, this card seems absolutely terrific. And is very, very much playable and limited, and you guys enjoy that thing because it's very good. Now, another that is very good and very playable and limited is Coastal Discovery, a blue and three colorless sorcery that is uncommon. You're drawing two cards. However, for six mana, a blue and five colorless, you can awaken four. So for four mana, I'm getting two cards, but for six mana, I'm getting two cards and a four four, and that is very, very good. That is, that is terrific. Yeah, I mean, this is just... Uh, uh, going to be a very good card in this format. Drawing cards is great and sealed, especially, but mm -hmm. that the retail of the Mole Drifter effect of six mana, I get a four four, and I draw two cards, like is very powerful. Like this is a slow Mole Drifter if you want to really think of it that way. Sure. Like I mean, it's just it's a bad Mole Drifter, and Mole Drifter was unbelievable. <laughs> so even the bad Mole Drifter is pretty freaking good. Oh yeah, I mean for yeah, I mean actually that is this is just the like homelands mole drifter Ooh. just costs one extra mana. <laughs> maybe maybe the Kamigawa mole drifter. Let's not the go Kamu sure Kamigawa. Let's not, go, not go all the way down. Or you know what I'm saying we can just go down. <laughs> I mean another way to think about this card is if it were a six mana four four that you know entered the battlefield tapped and drew you two cards. Like you would still be like good card. Okay, I'm happy yeah, but, to play this four four that draws me cards. But it has a Voke for four. Exactly. Which so makes for, it great, yeah. Which makes it absolutely terrific. So play all the copies you can get your hands on in Limited because they are all very, very good. Yep. Coral Helm Guide is a blue and a colorless 2-1 Merfolk Scout ally. That's important. So mm -hmm. it also has an ability of blue and four colorless target creature can't be blocked this turn, which seems a lot better than the one mana guy in white. Yes, uh, of course it is, because it does have another power. And I do like this card a lot because it does a lot of cool things with processors, mm -hmm. with Eldrazi just giving creatures unblockable in the late game. It can get some early beats or trade early, but like the cards cards that sit in play that help you win the game in the, uh, in the late game are always good. Mm -hmm. And so like these extra added abilities of just giving evasion to any creature you want, and the best evasion, right? Like... This isn't flying or yeah. horsemanship or shadow. This is it can't be blocked no matter what you've got. Right. And so yeah, like these effects are always good and limited. <laughs> what? Did you bring up horsemanship for real? Oh yeah, I brought up horsemanship. You just brought up horsemanship, <laughs> dude. The, wow. How many? All right. So 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 actual percentage of people that heard horsemanship that are watching that have no idea what it is. I hope it's a lot. I can imagine it's quite yeah. a few. We're I talking, think it is around twenty percent. Yeah, maybe sure. You should look that up. It's a different flying, and that's kind of a problem. It's not even a different flying because whatever. Either way, it's a weird. Mechanic. It's more complex than flying, but it was in the beginning. 
beginner set. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah, you can you can take a look at that if you guys are curious. Uh, in the meantime, Coral Helm Guide is very good, very playable, and I think it's going to be very good in kind of these Eldrazi decks when you're like, I need to get the ingestors through. I want to get my processor to do something really sweet. Like that that allows you to do real cool stuff. Yeah. All right. So Cryptic Cruiser, a Cryptic Cruiser, really sounds like a weird car. A blue and three colorless 3-3, which is Hill Giant stats for a Devoid card. It has no color. It's an Eldrazi processor. For a blue and two colorless, you may put a card an opponent owns from exile under that player's graveyard, and you may tap target creature. Note that that is an activated ability. It doesn't tap them. You can use as much as you want for as much mana as you have, and really seems to be incredibly synergistic in what you want to be doing with your ingest sort of enablers to enable this card to be as good as it could be. Oh, yeah. This is the engine of that deck because you're going to... Once once there's a card exiled, you're able to put it back to tap a creature to get the uh, ingest to trigger again, so that you can use this ability once once more. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like this card is going to be very good for that uh, that deck, and backed up by some bounce to start it all off with is going to help too. So mm -hmm. I think that this is just one of the great uh, Devoid Eldrazi processor type effects that um, I mean you're looking for like. Pretty much, I honestly think like it's pretty basic set in the sense that if it's uncommon and you're in that deck, take it over the commons, you know, like, yes. and that's what it feels like. Like you always do that, and so like there's so many different like tribes in this and and the processor, and this is like one of the good ones. I don't know if it's better than the other blue one that we're gonna get to, mm -hmm. but I do really like this card a lot. Well, I, I think it's one of the premier uncommons in the Eldrazi slash ingest processor deck because a lot of the processors only get to play their ability once, you know? They mm -hmm. get they get there one time. When it enters the battlefield, you can do a thing and then you get another get an effect and that's great. Yep. This one is just like you pump mana into me and as long as you can keep exiling cards, you can keep tapping creatures, and that is, seems to be incredibly powerful. Well, I didn't think that other people had to tap cards. Huh? I thought you did that for them. Well, yeah, that's my job. Bro, yeah. hello. So you are the cryptic cruiser of magic? <laughs> are you calling me are you calling me ugly? No, you do. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't call it. You just went there. <laughs> that's just where you Awful. took it. So I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, oh, oh no, it was not brought. It was not broughten. Don't don't be doing that to me. <laughs> Go. You know, you think somebody's your friend. Dampening Pulse is a blue and three colorless enchantment. It's an uncommon, and what it says is creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus zero. Now all of their scions are Eldrazi spawn once again, yep. and la di da. Okay, I feel like they just put this in the set just for that joke because like wizards have to just love the meta jokes, and they're like, we can turn scions into spawns. Let's yes. do it. <laughs> so that's what it feels like. All right, level of playability and limited zero. Zero? One, maybe. I don't know. The actual it seems bad. Zeros? All right, so if, and if you open two in your sealed pool, still zero? I'm, yeah, I'm not blue. Too open too many bad uncommons in blue, so I'm not blue. They oh. play in different colors. Well, that's unfortunate. It's just one of those that it's a blue. It's four mana. It does it. It does affect the board when it enters the battlefield. It it does have some effect, and it could very well be a problem. I mean, you know, it was um, what was that? What was that mythic artifact from the core set that 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 uh, reduced one damage from every source that would deal damage to you? you know I don't remember what it's called, but I did play that at the Pro Tour. Yeah, so it I did was, draft it at the Pro Tour. Yeah, and it was one of those things that, like, I, I thought it was silly, I thought it was unplayable, I thought it was bad, and it turns out, because of that stupid ability, I could not kill my opponent. And yeah, my, and, well, to be fair, that card that card was much better than this card, sure. because it stopped, like, Chandra's Fury, and I was a Thopter, a Thopter deck, sure. with, like, Jace and Thopter Assembly and stuff like that. Right. But this card doesn't have those, and it's... It, it's bad. Just don't just don't convince them to Fine. play it. Fine. I'm not trying to convince anybody. I'm trying to convince myself, buddy. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do here. So Dispel is back. A blue instant that counters target instant spell. This has incredible implications for standard. Brad, tell me about them. Dispel is disgusting. It is this... Uh, it's pretty much like one of those... Uh, you know, like the glare of heresy cycle? Mm -hmm. Like this is the blue anti-blue card. And it's so good at what it does because it's... It's going to counter digs. It's going to counter removal spells. It's going to counter Ojitai's commands. Uh, after sideboard, you know, all the control decks are like, we bring in negates to fight each other's spells because we're going to get into a counter war. Mm -hmm. Well, Dispel, Dispel is always faster, and the faster spell always wins. And there's a reason why we see Dispel as a modern playable card when we really never see negate. Right. And that's just saying that, like, 
even though negate doesn't counter the actual like win conditions that control decks are going to have, dispel right. counters all the other stuff, and it's going to be very important in new Magic. And I think that like the this format probably they thought Dig Through Time was a little bit was going to win more than it actually did because this feels like a straight up like we finally have an answer to Dig Through Time. It's won a lot. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean it's been it's it's been very good, but like. This is just a hammer home, you know, like put up the middle finger against blue decks. Like that's what this card does. Stop the madness. Yeah, stop the madness. This is the perfect anti-end good card for Jeskai decks to play. Like it's just so good. There you go. So, but in limited, not so much. Yeah, limited, there's going to be a couple removal spells. Sometimes they're sorceries. Mostly they're permanent. So I would never start a dispel in, in limited. Yeah, but maybe, I mean, I, obviously if you're not starting, it's just going to be hanging out in your sideboard. And maybe there's some ridiculous instant or they have tons of instants. And mm -hmm. I mean, maybe. I don't know. It's it's pretty fringe unplayable there. But but in standard, it's got real implications. Oh, yeah. It's very good in standard. You're going to see a lot of sideboard play. There you go. So Drowner of Hope is next. A bomb rare in blue. Our I've, first Eldrazi. Yes, our actual factual, not a processor, not a drone, an Eldrazi, a blue and five colorless 5-5, five, five, a six mana 5-5 five, five that has Devoid. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you put two 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature tokens on the battlefield. They have Sack Me to add one colorless to your mana pool. And it also has another ability, because why not? Sack an Eldrazi Scion to tap target creature. This card is bananas. Do you ever remember, you know, like, you know, we talk about how we played this game for a while and, like, Savannah Lines was a rare, blah, blah, blah. Do you remember when a 5-5 five, five for 6 mana that was blue was like, you can't attack unless everyone has 13 islands in play and the moon is not out? <laughs> you know, just like, yeah, it was exactly. like, like, the worst creatures of all time. And now they're just like, here's 7 power for 6 mana. You have these two awesome abilities on it yeah. and it has no color and it's sweet. And it's like, great, and it's just going to crush, yeah. and it's awesome, but you don't need them to have an island. You don't have to have your aunt's name start with a B. You know, it's like, yeah. you, so <laughs> it's okay. It's like this blue card is just awesome from start to finish. Pick it, play it always. It's splashable. It's a monster. This card is super, super good. It's very good. I, I love the crap out of this card. So, Drowner of Hope and All-Star. We're going to move on to another All-Star, Eldrazi Sky Spawner. For a blue and two colorless, it is a 2-1 Devoid Flyer. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 colorless Scion creature, Eldrazi Scion creature token on the battlefield. It has Sack Me, add one colorless to your mana pool. This card is like the best Windrake of all time. Oh, this card is so good. But the one thing that I think about every time I look at this art is like giraffes... A, like a giraffe being born has it easy compared to a drowsy spawn sky spawners. Ah! Yeah, like I would like it. Like look how high up it is. It's just like, oops, I didn't know I was gonna give birth right now. It just like falls like five hundred feet. There's a lot of you know biological things going on in this image where it's like yeah. there's the sack and it's gonna fall out and I'm sure there's gonna be some fluids going on. It's getting a little gross. All I know is my Windrakes have never, like, A, given me mana acceleration, B, give me chump blockers, or C, just give me another attacker. Like, well, yeah, it's it's three... Like, we've seen these cards in the last couple sets where they... The, the, the flip of... of uh, I don't remember their names. Stand you know their Step names? Outcast? Outcast, yeah. yeah. And Graft... Something. Something. Something, something. It's fine. Whatever. It was the red version of Sand Step Outcast. But, um... Eldrazi's Sky Spawner is the reverse, where it's the flyer is the two powered and the, the creature is the one one on the ground. So right. it's so powerful. And a two one flyer in this format that already gives you another power. We already know that like the split of a two one and a one one for three mana is disgusting. It's great. Super playable, yeah. very, very powerful. This one just gives you the the and again, it's not just that you're giving that much power. Like you couldn't sacrifice Sandstep Outcast or the or the token that it made for another mana. To get you up to five mana on turn four. Like, that is yeah. that is incredible. Yeah, this card's very, very good. This card is, I this want everything. probably the best blue common in the set. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it seems completely nuts. And I love everything about it. So pick every one that you absolutely see. Play every one that you get. And it will always be doing good things for you. Yep. We're going to look up next at uh, Exert Influence. A blue and four colorless sorcery with Converge. Gain control of target creature if its power is less than or equal to the number of colors of mana spent to cast it. This is a big question mark for me. This seems to me like, A, it could be insane and standard. It could be absolutely fantastic because the mana right now is so disgustingly great. You know, when you have 
a swamp and a mountain, and then you can sacrifice, you know, your your flooded strand to go get the blue white dual land, you know, and all of a sudden you just got colors coming at your butt, and that's great. Like I'll take your Tassiker, I'll take your Siege Rhino, you know, I'll take whatever awesome thing you have on the other side of the table. And I can also see it being bad because it. Tell me how it's bad, Brad. Tell me how this thing is. Bad. Okay. Well, it's probably not a main deckable card because five mana sorceries to gain control are pretty bad, but. Uh, I do think that there's going to be a lot of four-color um, converge decks that are going to be based around uh, all the colors but red mm -hmm. because that's going to give you – I forgot the name. It's the green-blue demonic tutor card from the set. Bring to light. Uh, bring to light, yeah, which is like everyone. No one talked about it. No, everyone's talking about it right now. Right. And so like bring to light decks are going to exist because you can just go rhino and then rhino and then rhino and then rhino. Yeah. Because you have eight rhinos in your deck. Absolutely. And so like the sideboard of exert influence kind of metagames against the mirror match where you're just like play around and you're like, I'll steal your rhino. And they're like, uh, kill your rhino. And you're like, play a rhino. And they're like, play a rhino. And you're like, steal your rhino. <laughs> and so like that's, that's really good. So yes. I think that that's going to be a good sideboard card for those four color decks in the Rhino Mirror matches. Yeah, this this to me was always like, when I saw it, I thought it was great. And I was like, wow, this seems like a really sweet control magic and it can do a bunch of really cool things in those types of mirrors. And then like, but then, you know, you know, the inter internet was just like, this card is terrible. Why would you ever play this thing? And I'm just like, because it's sweet. I mean, you know, mind control is good, but it was an enchantment, you know, and this is not. This is forever. This is happening until you get rid of the creature I stole. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm only a magic and I'm going to get so much heat and flack for saying this, but maybe it's just I'm in the magic world and the internet's just like this all the time. But you remember that, like, episode of South Park, the rabble, 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 rabble. Remind me. Okay, well, there's just an, a, an episode. I don't remember what was happening, but they had a mob of angry people, mm -hmm. and all they did is say rabble. Like, they're actually yelling things, uh -huh. but, like, the joke is, like, all, it's just noise. And I was just like, rabble, 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 I hate this. And that's just what the internet feels like with magic. They're just, like, so polarized on every magic card that makes no sense to me where it's like, I, I feel like I have a good mindset when it comes to new cards mm -hmm. where I'm going to give a lot of them the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to try to figure out where they would be good. And sure. then it's this catalog in my brain that's like, oh, this timeline right now would be perfect for this thing I already thought about. So then I go back and try it. Nice. And then if it's good, it's good. And so like exert influence isn't bad. It's not a main deckable card in, in no stretch of the imagination because like you're paying five mana to gain control of creatures and you don't know if your opponent's playing twenty two ones for one mana. <laughs> or <laughs> they could you know, be ties. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that's the type of stuff that you're obviously wanting to be taking with this card. But uh, but yeah, I mean, and there's there's a lot of kind of like hate for Battle for Zendikar, and they don't like the set, and there's this weird like everything is bad, and this is all crap. And then people were pointing back to when Cons was first spoiled, and people were like, Siege Rhino is okay. I guess it might. I don't know. It doesn't really seem that good. Maybe when Pelucranos leaves, you know, we maybe we'll play it. You know. And well, to be fair, I was part of that group. I thought Pelucranos was better than Siege Rhino. Brand. I didn't know how good Obzon Charm was. That it was just the best thing. Like, everyone, at the end of last season, everyone's like, I think the best card in center was probably Obzon Charm. Because mm -hmm. it just always bridged whatever gap your Obzon deck needed. Yeah. And that's why Rhino was really that good. Because, like, you always had this card that's like, oh, we're in a race, plus two, plus two. You know, oh, you have a creature, kill it. Oh, we're in a stalemate, draw a bunch of cards. Sure. It, it's so, always good all the time, which I understand. But, you know, there's yeah. a, lot, a lot of hate going on there. I don't like it. We're going to move on now to Guardian of Tazim, a 5-mana 4-5 bomb rare that flies. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. If that land was an island, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So talk about insult and injuries. This card is fan-freaking-tastic and limited. Absolutely it's huge. So good. It's just going to win you games left and right. It's hard to say a bad word about it. Well, it could be a 5-5. Five -five. It could draw you a card, not couldn't it? It could draw you cards. Mm -hmm. But it don't. It could uh, keep them from ever untapping. Could make you breakfast. It could. Well, no, I already have someone that does that for me, so I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Humble brags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what you did there. This card is good. Again, if you're in blue, this is where you want to be. This is easily first pick and draft. Like, this card is very, very, very strong. 
Yeah, very good card. Yeah, you I mean, I don't it. know what else to say about it. It's just it's the one of the bomb limited cards in the format. Just play it. Yep, just play it and love it. Now, speaking of a card that I was really excited about when I first saw it, Halimar Tidecaller is nuts. This is a blue and two colorless two three human wizard ally. It's even an ally for God's sake. It is uncommon. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, you may return target card with Awaken from your graveyard to your hand. Land cr- and it has one more ability because why not? It's already getting yeah. your card from your graveyard to your hand, but it also says land creatures you control have flying so you could potentially keep rebuying your unsummon over and over again making flying tutus as a result now flying three threes flying three threes yeah absolutely so this card is is very very strong i just i can't i i could i would not be surprised to see this thing in standard from how much value it's giving you yeah especially with the art like i i know that i'm one of the only weird ones that does this but when the when the art really catches me Mm-hmm. on a card that's an uncommon that seems like it could see standard play i think wizards thinks it will see standard play so it's worth investigating hmm. and that's just me because like if you just you know there's a lot of uncommons that the art is like good but like they didn't make it as crisp they didn't put a lot of work into it like this this piece of art is phenomenal <laughs> it is just to me it's like the best art in the set just because it just looks great it's the and weirdest thing to judge a card by i feel i don't feel like that because there's a lot of times that that is just the truth well, there's some ugly cards that are good too. I mean, you know, it's not name like, one. I don't know, Inquisition of Kozilek is pretty fugly, but that's a that's a <laughs> not a very pretty one. I mean, it's fine. It's I, I, I didn't know we could say that word. <laughs> well, you know, it's just we're, it's very ugly, sir. It's very, yes, very ugly, Brad. And <laughs> okay, well, sometimes ugly cards are good too, but there's a lot of very pretty cards, a lot of very good art cards. I just feel like you know, R and D doesn't work in a world where they see the art. You know, like they just at least the best I could tell, they always work with like stickers on cards and stuff, and so they're all about like, what, what are the costs, what are the numbers, what are the effects, and this card seems super, super good. Yeah, no, the card is very good, and especially with so many cards that have Awaken, even if you don't Awaken them first, you're going to be able to return them back to your hand, use them again. I'm, like, the big one I'm thinking about is, like, the Destroy Target Tap Creature. Yeah. Um, and so, this card's great. I mean, it's going to win a lot of games in different ways, like Card Advantage. It's going to give you Evasion. It's going to have, like, these Alpha Strikes where you just don't expect the two lands that you have to, like, go in the air. Right. Um, and it builds its own, like, flying army with, like, Awake, play a spell, awake, and untap, play the tide caller, and then play that spell next turn, and then you have another Mm 4-4. So at any time in the game, this card's going to be great. I mean, returning the draw spell so you can get another 4-4 and two more cards, like, man, this card... Because who needs more cards to draw? I know, right? No one needs You are ridiculous. What is it with magic players? And I don't understand it. What is it with magic players? want more value. I always want value. I want to live in a value vault. I want to be Scrooge McDuck, and there's little chunks of value down there, and I just swim in them. I'm just swimming. I'm just swimming in the value. You can't stop me. Nobody can control me. (laughs) It's awesome. I love it. This card is terrific. Always play it. Always pick it. It's fantastic. Now, Horribly Awry has not gone horribly awry. It's a blue and a colorless instant with the void. It counters target creature spell with convert a mana cost four or less, so it's getting those siege rhinos, and if that spell is countered, you X sell it instead of putting it in its owner's graveyard this card seems incredibly playable oh it's very playable i've already tested with it it's good i don't know exactly how many copies you want or if it's a cyber card or how many you want in the main and certain archetypes Mm -hmm. but one of the big things about counter spells for two mana like two mana counter spells are really good against obzon where three mana are generally just too slow unless you're a dedicated control deck and now if you're like a jeskai deck uh, Disdainful Stroke was played against Obzon Control, but you couldn't play that many copies because you wanted something that could kill Rhino, but you also need something to kill Elspeth. Mm-hmm. Well, now Elspeth's gone, and you're going to want to deal with all these early creatures, but very few cards actually interact profitably with Rhino and Den Protector, and this is one that does that. And it stops the whole, like, if you're playing against Deathmiss Raptor, Den Protector shenanigans, they're like, more fun three, and you're like, all right, counter, kill it. And they're like, it was my Deathmiss Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, whatever, it's exiled now, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did that stuff, too. Like, I actually bragged about that. Like, in London, when I was playing Green Red Dragons, I was just like, everyone kills the morph. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so you would always just morph the Deathmiss Raptor and then yeah, actually Yeah, well, I would, like, look at my graveyard, think for a minute, put it into play, and the best players would just hook, line, and sink. And they're like, 
He looked at his graveyard and that wasn't intentional. He just accidentally did that. Killing just like death mist idiot. Like <laughs> nice, nice. Play my den protector. Now this but, card seems very good in standard because den protectors and death mist raptors exist along with siege rhinos. Now in limited, where I think you see a lot more higher casting cost cards that could be higher impact, is this good enough in sealed or does it? It actually feels like it's a better card in draft. Way better in draft. Sealed, you don't want it because you don't lose to the early creatures usually. You lose to the big bomb. So unless you have a lot of controlling elements or anticipate, this works well with anticipate because you want things to do with holding up mana and that's where you would want that both those cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't generally play many copies or draft them that highly. Sure. Yeah, it just doesn't seem but they do But help, they do help the processor deck. So maybe that is a good enough reason to actually play this card. Hmm, it's possible. Now, Incubator Drone is very good. It is a, an Eldrazi drone, in fact. It's a blue and three colorless 2-3 with the Void, and when it enters the battlefield, it makes a 1-1 Eldrazi Scion. And I'm not going to repeat that text anymore, because you should know what a Scion does, because I've said it like four times. So, it, it's... It drives, right? It's a car? That's right. It's it's, uh, it's fuel efficient. Um, yeah. We have a four mana 2-3 that makes ultimately three power and four toughness across two bodies, and that seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and this is like really where you're gonna see like the the split between what the Eldrazi decks are doing. Like, mm -hmm. this card does not look good at all if you're trying to do devoid processor stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when you're trying to just kind of ramp into, well, yeah, but if you're just trying to ramp into like big fat Eldrazi's, this, this is, guy is great. Like, he'll take you from four to six, no problem. Yeah, so like this is the big one where like you don't want this in your processor deck because it's not going to help it. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a two through that ramps and you probably don't need to ramp. But if you're trying to get to the big spells that we're going to get to, and maybe this was the set to just start with artifacts or not artifacts, but colorless, colorless cards. Sure. Yeah, because like we're going to get to the end of this, and if you don't really look through the set that extensively, there's a lot of big monsters at the end of our. Yeah. Yeah. There's and absolutely so like tunnel. this is the best card for that. Yeah, and this is the card you want to be playing. And ultimately, again, it's just it's just like a good, solid four drop. There's nothing really mm -hmm. wrong with it. It's nothing really bad. It's not a card I'm going to be upset. It's not a card I would draft super highly. I would probably take it mid to late. But like you have in, in Seal, this seems like absolutely something you play basically every time you're in blue. Yep. Because this card is very strong. We have Mist Intruder, the Storm Crow that has so many words on it. It's a blue and a colorless 1-2 flyer with Devoid and Ingest. This is the card that gets your ingest and going. It gets your processes doing stuff. It has evasion. That's a good thing. It's really cool artwork, which I like a lot. Brad, how do you feel about it? I mean, this is exactly what the processor deck needs is a lot of early ingest spells that actually trigger. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to see in this set is that there's a lot of devoid ingest creatures, but some of them are more aggressive than others, mm -hmm. and some of them have more evasion to help really the processor deck. So we're gonna see, you can play these in a lot of different decks, and there's gonna be like things that it works with, even if it's not uh, trying to ingest into devoid or into processors, mm -hmm. but um, you're gonna want this card very highly in that deck. Like these are gonna be very important role players for them, and going to allow you to keep synergistically taking cards so that your whole deck works as this, uh, one big engine. Yeah, absolutely. So this card, along with the three mana unblockable guy, really powers up the Merc Strider. The Merc Strider yeah. is kind of the new Mana War esque card. It's a blue and three colorless 3 2 with Devoid, and when it enters the battlefield, you may put a card an opponent controls from exile into their graveyard. And if you do, return target creature to its owner's hand. This card helps you on tempo. It has even more, it has a, one more power than the Magic Origins Mana War did for four mana. Can't remember its name exactly, uh, something Void Mage, something or other. And Void Mage Prodigy, yeah. Was it Void Mage Prodigy? Great. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so you had. So here we have a four mana three two with that tempo boost helps with all of your ingest cards and you know this seems to be one of the sort of the hallmarks of the processor deck. Oh yeah, there's there's going to be quite a few more that are pretty good, but this is a great one. Um, and uh, this is going to be the common one. This is going to be a big theme, and especially with getting multiples like Void Made Prodigy was such a high pick in the last format that if you get a lot of Merc Riders, you're going to have a great deck um, as long as you have the ingesters, which the blue ones are really good at triggering it. But just Having that tempo boost of bouncy things and having three power is a big significance. And I love uh, the uh, flavor text on this card, too. <laughs> if you can see it, it's too late. Oh, my yeah. God. As In it's, a world. It inspects its next, you know, meal. 
Yeah, I love that. Just kind of the guys just hanging there. Yeah. That's really sweet. Okay. So we have Oracle of Dust, easily one of my favorite creatures <laughs> in terms of artwork. <laughs> it's a five mana, three five, a blue and four colorless, three five with Devoid, two mana, put a card an opponent control, opponent owns from exile into their graveyard, draw a card, then discard a card. Another one of these processors that is able to trigger multiple times in a turn. And that to me means that it's very, very powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's just it. Like, you're going to want to try to, like, loot through your deck. And late game, if you've exiled a lot but don't have anything going on, you're just every two mana replaces a draw step with one of the lands that are stuck in your hand right. that you don't really need. So I do like this card a lot. I don't think it's that powerful. I think it's just, like, a role player. It's fine. You can play it, but it's not, like, broken or anything. But it does fit the curve well, and it does have a decent power and toughness for casting cost. I mean, it's not a bomb, and I'm not really saying it's a bomb. I'm just saying, like, it's powerful in that I can continue to use its ability, which is great. I can do it multiple times a turn. I can attack you with ingesters and then keep using it after that. And mm -hmm. the power and toughness is not to be underestimated. No, 3-5 is great in this set. 3-5 for 5 has been good before, and it's a devoid creature, so there's going to be uh, ways that they get boosted power and toughness from other, other uh, effects. And the ability... Um, will be relevant. I don't know how relevant, but it, it'll be fine. The more ingesters you have, it seems like the better this card's going to be. Yeah, but I don't even know how much you ingest in this format. We'll see. Like, this is one of those cards that I don't know how often you're exiling cards from your opponent's uh, library mm -hmm. and how fast you mill people. Sometimes I wonder if games end in mill. Like, I, that that's interesting to me. Wow, really? That seems I mean, strange. maybe. It could. Uh, I mean, you're exiling cards from the top of their library. Sure, and for those who lose to being having their cards exiled slash milled, please leave us a comment because I want to hear from you guys and hear that so hear that sob story because it has to be has to yeah. be pretty rough. Um, mm -hmm. And lastly, this artwork is amazing and I love it. He's playing with well, his little toy allies and he's just smashing them together. I I will say that I predict a lot of people to get milled out this weekend. Wow, really? I would predict tons. I would even high bet that one of the, like, I would say at least, like, 3% of people get milled out this weekend. But I can't, but you can't prove that. You can't pie bet on something that's like, well, there's 3% across the aggregate of all the pre-releases in the world. Well, I know. I just want to say, well, I think people will get Ulamogged this weekend. Nice. Well, they may get Ulamogged. You're not and that'll right. exile them. <laughs> yes, yes, it will. Okay. <laughs> Next up is my spoiler, Wizards. Thank you very much for the sweet mythic. Part the Water Veil is a blue and four colorless sorcery. You take an extra turn after this one, and then you exile it, but it can awaken six for three blue and six colorless. So for six mana, you get another turn, and for nine mana, you get another turn and a six six. And for ten mana, you get to beat them across the face with that six six, and then get another turn with it yeah, yeah i never really thought like this is the first time like like your your time walk can literally kill them yeah not figuratively like it normally does it's like well he time walked me two times in a row so then i got like all these problems but it's not like it, it literally can kill them yeah i mean there was that time walk in what was it dragons temporal extortion or whatever it was mm -hmm. um and that was that had delve it's like three blue and eight colorless with delve but that but you're getting rid of so many cards in your graveyard and you're paying three blue mana but you're only getting a time walk after all that effort this is nine mana but you're able to get that real value that you want for all of that mana that you that you put into all those resources that you put into just to get a time walk is not enough but when you're able to kind of get that bonus on top of it it's really sweet well yes and i agree with you but you know you know crapping on one time walk to defend another time walk i feel like you're a little biased in this one since this was your preview card shut up i am biased for what too okay <laughs> stop my biases well I'm, I'm gonna shut that down right now and say both of them are not playable and constructed, but they're fun and sweet and awesome. Fine. I still like Sorry. it. I still want to see at least one, just a one, so Jace can flash it back. That's all I want to see. Let's let's move to the most playable card in the format. Fine. Moving on to Prism. <laughs> <laughs> now look, Wizards, what are you doing? <laughs> what is happening in our life right now? Because, oh, I know exactly what happened with this card. This, yeah. See, as a professional Magic player, I understand this card. Would you like to know what happened? Oh, please, tell me. They used the random card generator yes, that we did. found out about like a couple of weird months ago. Robo Rosewater is in effect. Prism Array is a blue and four colorless enchantment with Converge. It has a crystal counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. You may remove one of those crystal counters to tap target creature. And it has another ability of all five colors of mana, colon, scry three. 
Wizards, seriously, this is the type of stuff that if someone were applying for a job there, you would laugh them out of the room and tell them to go home and look at some real magic sets because what are you doing? This is a rare, I, for God's sake. It's a rare. And it doesn't, I don't even get what, it, it, is there like, it's not like, it's not like the Hell Vault that they're forced to print, right? Yeah. Like there are cards in sets that you just have to make a thing sure. because it's just part of the storyline. Right. But Prism Array, like this is not a this is not a pivotal moment in the storyline at all. It's just a thing that exists and I don't even get why it exists. I just don't understand like why does Why it- can't they tap and untap like into next turn or like that ability cuz that's common in the set. Why yeah. why does it just tap it? Why doesn't it just lock it down at least for another turn? Why yeah. doesn't five colors of mana add a crystal counter to it? Why does it scry yeah. 3? What, what is happening in this card? It makes no sense. I don't understand it. I need an adult. Brad, I need an adult. I mean, You're they're done. all frozen by the prism array. <laughs> this card is awful. Don't play it. It'll make you feel bad. This is yep. easily one of the worst rares in the set. Not close. Easily is the worst rare in the set. The worst. Congratulations. The by far worst. Prism Array got there. Retreat to Coral Helm, however, is very sweet. A blue and two colorless. It is the retreat, so it has a, it's an enchantment with landfall. You get one of two options. The first option is you may tap or untap target creature, and the second option is you may scry one. So with Knight of the Reliquary, you're able to go nuts and get lots of you know, lots of lands out of your deck, and that's fantastic. Otherwise... What is with you and the, like... All the modern land combos. I like modern land combos. Leave me alone. <laughs> They're fun, and I enjoy them. I think this card is very strong. Uh, easily one of the best retreats, and is able to give you tempo and you know just advantage throughout the entire game. So I don't care about that scry one. I'm either giving my huge monster vigilance, or I'm tapping down the best thing they've got on their on their battlefield. It's so interesting because I find this as the worst retreat in the set. What? This is just the this is by far the worst. Now I'm just talking about limited here. I don't really think this thing can see a lot of constructed play, but like Oh yeah, no, and limited it's even worse than all the other ones. Uh, what? Why? Because tap or untap is okay, so like the red one says target creature can't block is one of the effects, right? So sure. it's practically the tap down the creature, same thing. Sure. And untap to give vigilance, sure. Whatever. Scry okay. one seems so bad. Yeah, it helps you with flood protection, but like that's like one of the problems with like 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 magic philosophy is you wasted a card in your deck to do this effect that all your lands that you draw are a little bit worse because you've wasted a card. So like if you draw too many lands, this card didn't help you with that at all. It was just like a blank slate. So every land lets you scry lands to the bottom, but you could have just had this card be something. And that would have made the extra land better. Does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense in many regards. I just feel like, you know, there's scenarios when you start to flood out and this card gets you through it. And you start to, and you get to a situation where you really, like they have a death touch guy or they have some monster that you just can't get through that you get to tap down as a result. And and those, those to me are two good scenarios in which this card gets to shine. Brad, it gets to shine. Right. Moving on. Okay. Hate you. This is my new game. Just nope. Just just waiting. Just just waiting. Just waiting. (laughs) Evan's just saying words, making noises with his mouth. Great. (laughs) Royal Mage's Trick is a blue and three colorless instant. Another converge card. Great. Creatures your opponents control get minus X minus O until end of turn, where X is the number of colors spent to play it, and then you draw a card. So, eh, not very good. Oh, this is bad, especially with like how Hydrolash. We thought Hydrolash was actually really good last set, yeah, because it was the same effect draw card. And we're like, you throw a draw card or anything, it's great. Yeah, I just remember our reman Snapcaster or reman stories of that card. Yeah, and then once I start playing Origins Draft, it still was bad. Yeah, so this card's real bad. Don't play it. It's bad. It, you'll feel bad. <laughs> it's not good. They, it looks. They it's make one of those... this effect every single set. They do, and they want to make it better so they can put draw a card on it. And it looks like it, it could really shrink their team, but it doesn't really doesn't really do that. And if you're only a two color deck, like you're overpaying for it to start with, it's mm-hmm. just just don't. Let's just move on. Ruination Guide, however, is sweet. It's a blue and two colorless three two, which is already high up on that curve. With the void, ingest, and other colorless creatures you control get plus one plus zero. That includes the scions. That includes that wind drake we looked at. That includes all sorts of creatures. And this card seems to be super super sweet. Yeah, this is premium for any uh, El- like the Eldrazi 
uh, any Eldrazi deck actually. This just fits in either kind. If you're trying to ramp into big things, all your uh, Eldrazi Scions are going to have extra power. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to do the whole other ingest uh, processor shenanigans, it has ingest. Right. And it's just going to be boosting all these creatures. So uh, uh, especially like even the Stormcrow becomes a 2-2. So yeah. I think that this card is very powerful and is uh, a very high pick. And also one of the cards you really want to see in your soap pool if you're trying to play one of these decks. Yeah, I mean, I, either or. I mean, like this card is just, I, if I'm in blue, I want this type of card because everything I'm playing around it is generally just going to be better, more awesome, more powerful than mm -hmm. it was to start with. And, you know, missed Intruder into this guy, and all of a sudden you have a 2-2 flyer that's ingesting and it's just getting in there every single turn. Yeah, very good. This card is terrific. We're going to move on to Rush of Ice. Rush of Ice is a blue sorcery common that taps target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, but it also has Awaken 3 of a blue and four colorless. So for a blue and four colorless, you get to tap down a dude, and you also get your 3-3 three, three land, and that's really sweet. And it's not quite as good as Unsummon, but it's still mm -hmm. pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably uh, an ingest enabler. And it can make a uh, awaken something later in a game. I'm not the biggest fan of this card, mm -hmm. but I do think that it's playable, but not in high numbers. And you sh you have to have a reason to play it. Like you don't have to have a reason to play a Doom Blade. They're like, what? Well, like, well, how do you defend a Doom Blade, right? Like, why are you playing a Doom Blade to kill creatures? This card, you have to have a defense and a reason you're actually playing it for synergistic reasons because its power level isn't high enough. Yeah, I mean, like when we talked about the, you know, for players who are just like, well, I don't understand why you guys were so excited about a Unsummon, but you weren't excited about this card. Well, Unsummon makes them pay the entire cost of that creature again. Whereas Rush of Ice just kind of locks it down. They still don't have to, they don't have to pay any other mana as a result of that. They just can no longer use it for a turn or so. So that mm -hmm. that's a big switch in power level in terms of what cards are making people do, essentially. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. So card is okay, not amazing, but okay. Don't pick it early. But I wouldn't be totally unhappy with playing like maybe one of this thing, you know, particularly if I can get it back with the other blue creature that we looked at earlier. Yeah, it depends on how the curves work. Like, I, I will say that I need to really test this format to understand how these curves uh, actually interact with Awaken and how you build them and, and stuff like that. But I, I'm not really high on playing these kind of effects because it, it isn't a tempo boost of them having to recast it. Like, you play this, that you lock it down, they play another creature, then it untaps, and then they have two creatures in play instead of one. Sure. And so that's, like, a big thing for me. Not so good. However, Salvage Drone is a blue 1-1 one -one common with Devoid and Ingest, and if he dies, you may draw a card, and if you do, you discard a card. So this is a this is a one-mana 1-1 one -one that actually has a lot of value there has things it yeah. can do stuff it can do it's ingesting that's good if they want to block and kill it that's fine because you're able to loot like i'm, I'm all right with all those scenarios yeah i think this is going to be a good card that you can play it's not great you're going to want like the three two that gives it a boost uh the biggest problem with this card is all the scions do just trade so uh i don't know if we're going to see like this is the kind of card that you might keep on in on the play and take out on the draw Sure. Just because it is a little too slow, and like the loot is whatever, but you did you did lose a card. Sure. Like if it said draw a card, it would just be insane, and probably you'd you'd play every copy, right? Yeah, absolutely. But because it's a loot, uh, it's an enabler, and that's about it. So like if you don't need it, don't play it, and it's not playable and sealed. No, well, I mean, yeah, it's one of those you want it to be on a curve. You want it to be on a curve that you built, and not a curve that was handed yep. to you. So as a result, it's a draft only monster, and and play accordingly. All right, so we have Scatter to the Winds because Cancel needed an upgrade. Two blue and a colorless counter target spell. That's, this, is, this is the instant, you know, Cancel, as it were. But it's rare because it's rare because it has Awaken 3 for two blue and four colorless. So for six mana, you get to counter a spell and make a 3-3. Three, three. It is very, it, it reminds me of almost Draining Welk. Remember Draining Welk? I do remember Draining Welk. Draining Welk was way better than this card. Draining but Welk it, was it way wasn't better. As, it wasn't as flexible, but... Sure. The six mana make a three three, and you're using one of your lands isn't what a control deck wants because a control deck. The reason you play control, especially for game ones, is to invalidate their removal, because like in game one, everyone plays removal spells in standard. Sure. Okay. Yes, this card is great and limited. All right. So I'll just say that because it's a counter spells are good and this can be a creature in the late game. Sure. Great and limited, but a lot of people are trying to just make this the dissolve. Right. And it's fine, but Dissolve let you scry, which dug you deeper to your dig through times. And this card doesn't. And the Awaken is irrelevant in, in standard because 
what every deck has all these removal spells in their main decks mm -hmm. to kill all the other creature decks, and the control decks get that advantage game one because they don't have anything to kill. Sure. And so this just turns that on. So awakening for three is just them getting to stone rain you. Well, I mean, possibly I could, but I mean, at the end of the day, for me, is like if you're in a situation where you guys are just sort of both in top deck mode, and you're in top deck mode, and you draw Scatter to the Winds, and I'm in top deck mode, and I draw Siege Rhino. When I play Siege Rhino, and you counter it, you're going to make one of your lands a three three, so you can attack next turn. Well, we're probably not in top deck modes, at least in game one. We are in top deck modes, but I have like a removal spell in hand. Sure. That's just rotting away. Unless and I awaken my Lumbering Falls. That doesn't work, though, because then you'd have to pay four mana to give it Shroud or give it Hexproof. Well, then maybe, you just gave me a good way to kill it. <laughs> maybe I've got <laughs> an F4. ten mana, Brad. Shut up. Yes, yeah, so we had ten mana, and now you have a 7-7 seven, seven, or a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. And Fine. you killed me with it. Congratulations. Do you want me to sign the slip? <laughs> <laughs> All right, even I'm like, I don't know if that magical Christmas land really exists. I'm not no, sure. No, it does not. Of course it doesn't. That, that doesn't. Fine. <laughs> you're right. Fine. It's still a good card, and you're always going to play it limited, so enjoy that. Spell Shrivel is a blue and two colorless instant with Devoid. You counter target spell unless its controller plays four colorless, and if it's countered, you exile it instead of put it in their graveyard. This is no mana leak, but it is still very playable. Yeah, I mean, mana leak is too good. This card's great because of the... Uh, Exile for limited. I don't think it's going to see standard play, obviously. It's just not good enough. But it's going to see limited play because it does help the processors. And, um, yes, mana, like, casting mana leak was good, but making them, like, counter in their two or three drop wasn't always the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. This can counter, like, big spells. Pain for mana in the late game is way more difficult than three. Right. You get their spell, and then you can uh, process it. So even if you can't deal combat damage, this is going to be one of those cards that's going to allow for the processor decks to stay consistent. Yeah, and so ultimately, you know, that's that's a pretty high mark in order to pay four colorless versus three colorless for mana leak. Doesn't quite fit in the right spot. On the, it doesn't fit the same spot on the curve, obviously, but that doesn't mean it's not powerful. Absolutely. I like it a lot. It's good. All right, we're going to move on here to Tide Drifter. Tide Drifter is a blue and a colorless 05, uncommon Eldrazi drone with Devoid, and other colorless creatures you control get plus zero, plus one. So plus zero, plus one is not plus one, plus zero. And as a result, this 05 that just does nothing still does nothing. Yeah, this card sucks. The only thing I like is the art kind of looks like that's the creature from like uh, some like metal bands like you know yeah. album cover right okay. it looks really sweet like i could see that thing like walking around just being <laughs> a badass like to some kind of like weird grungy song yeah just being all squiggly getting squiggly yeah, with it it's just a really unique creature but it also doesn't look like it doesn't have any power i don't get this card i think it sucks it's bad it's just it's i understand why they put it in the set and it's the yin to the yang of the other one but sometimes the yin is way better than the yang yeah even when they're not supposed to be Tightening Coils is the pin to the earth we always wanted. A blue and a colorless enchant creature with the enchanted creature gets minus six, minus zero, and loses flying. How how good of a piece of removal is this? I think it's a great piece of removal uh, for blue because blue doesn't have the removal spell, so you can't always like yes, killing an Eldrazi is better than you know tightening its coils, sure. but it's removal spell and it can deal with creatures. So like I have seen. Uh, Pin to the Earth do some good things back in Theros block, and I think that this card is going to do good things in this format, especially when it's going to be able to pretty much invalidate an Eldrazi. And back in the day, Eldrazi all had Annihilate, mm -hmm. but that's not anything here now. So even if you play, you can play the spell now on a big monster. Yeah, absolutely. So the card is is way better. And finally, Pin to the Earth did not make them lose flying, but Tightening Coils did. So. Way they to, fixed it. Way to pay attention, Wizards. You, you did a good job on that one. We're going to talk about Ugin's Insight. It's a two blue, three colorless sorcery that is rare, where you scry X, where X is the highest converted mana cost amongst permanents you control, and then you draw three cards. So this is not Jace's Ingenuity. Not by a, not by a long stretch. Well, that's... Okay, well, I was still on Tightening Coils reading the flavor text, but all right, we're, oh. we're, I'm, I'm caught oh. up. Oh, I see how Which, it is. Oh, this is better flavor text. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But do not forget they came as three. Yeah, this is this is this card sucks. Play it in limited, it's great. Standard, it's awful. You'll never play it. It's just terrible. <laughs> the only person that's gonna play this in standard is Adrian Sullivan, because he's crazy. Um, <laughs> but 
the flavor text is what the real thing about this card that's great is just because like when I heard Battle for Zendikar, like uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm a big fan of uh, Emrakul and Gristle Brand because I'm a Sneak and Show player. So like I have one of those giant Gristle Brands. Like last year I didn't make day two of a GP, so I spent the whole time trying to grind out a Gristle Brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when I saw the there. set, I'm like, I want to see the new Emrakul. I know it's not going to be better than the old Emrakul. Nothing could be. Sure. But I want to see it. And and then it wasn't here. And I'm just like, what? Where did where did the other two go? And then I saw this flavor text. And I'm like, oh, they're coming in the next set. Yes, yeah. Oath of the Gatewatch. Bring it. Give me my new Emrakuls. I don't know, man. It's like they made the biggest, most powerful creature of all time. And it's like, there's not a lot of place to go, guys. You know, now that you made well, your, your 15 mana, dude. That's not even that's not true because we have our, we have realized that that Emrakul just wins the game on the spot every single time no matter what in many different decks in in uh, Legacy and Modern and we're okay with it we're just like yeah we die to Emrakul because it's Emrakul yeah and that's just how it works so if they make an even better Emrakul and we all just replace the old Emrakul with the new Emrakul I don't think anyone's really gonna complain because it's like it's still Emrakul like this the is boss. the magic card right the end boss yeah of all end bosses but ultimately card is bad and standard extremely good and limited because it's a draw spell it's a draw spell that gives you options which is even better so mm -hmm. play accordingly put in your deck accordingly okay Ulamog's Reclaimer speaking of Eldrazi and their and their processors a four mana I'm sorry five mana two, a blue and four colorless two five with Devoid and whenever it enters the battlefield you may put in a card an opponent controls from exile into their graveyard and if you do return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand this seems to be one of the premier processors of the format yeah this is really good I mean it's going to be able to get you back a removal spell or a card advantage spell or even a bound spell right um and and that's just like going to be part of the engine. Like we all know that returning removal spells to our hand is great, right. and especially when this just two card combos with the exile a creature with power three or less from black, or deal three damage and exile a creature from red. Right. And you just play that spell, untap, play this, put that creature back into the graveyard, get back your removal spell. Whee! So it's just going to synergize really well with all of those spells. Yeah, yeah. This card just seems super value. It's easily highly pickable. It is almost always playable as long as you have some sort of ingesting going on. And uh, and it's just fantastic. Yeah, great, great, great spell. Excellent spell. All right, here we go. We're looking at Wave Wing Elemental, a blue and five colors, three, four flyer with landfall that gets plus two, plus two whenever you play a land. This is the premier landfall creature for blue. It took a while to get there, but this is it. And it becomes a five, six flyer, which is basically a dragon. And uh, and it has more or less dragon cost. It's six mana for what, what should be a five, six flyer when you're attacking with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. This card is good and should always be played in my opinion. I think otherwise. I think for lim for sealed, it's fine, but six mana is a lot. You need the seventh land to actually turn it on, and that's the problem with landfall is when you start drawing seven or eight lands, that means the game's really low econ, and you need your creatures to attack and block, mm -hmm. potentially. And so I'm not that confident in this card. I think this card is playable, but not great. Like, we're not going to be talking about how our opponents had wave wing elementals and we died, you know? Sure. It's more of me like, I can't believe I died to a wave wing elemental. That's oh, more... Oh, come on. It's not that I, bad. It's pretty bad. It's not that great. Okay, fine. It's very good in sealed. Let's put it that way. I'll play the sealed. Give me give me all I can in sealed. Oh, it's, it's fine in sealed. It's still right. not that great. I'd still rather be doing all drowsy stuff. I'd still rather probably be playing 18 lands if I'm playing, like, with two of these things, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, yeah, you, I mean, most decks in sealed are going to be on 18 lands in this format. It's a slow format. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, I think 18 lands is going to be the the hallmark in the format. So sure enough, so we have here, I believe, which is our final blue card, which it is, and Wind Rider Patrol, two blue, three colorless for a four three flyer, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you scry two. So this guy is just good old fashioned value. This is a yeah, five this is the card flyer. that I want to play. That's a flyer, not no wave wing elementals. I want my wing or Wind Rider Patrols. Fine. Uh, well, I mean, once it starts connecting, this is like, this is Ojutai. It's not as good as Ojutai, right. but if this is connecting, you're getting to a better place to continue connecting. Right. And so if we get that scry on, I feel like we're going to continue getting scries and dealing damage and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason this thing is uncommon, and five mana for four power in the air is always positive and is always good, mm -hmm. and seems to have that three toughness just so you can, just so there's some way to kill the stupid thing, you know? Yeah. 
you know, we don't want this to be like a, an air elemental with like <laughs> insane upside. Instead, it's almost an air elemental and still has insane upside. Exactly. I think this card's very good. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up all of the blue cards in Battle for Zendikar in our complete set review. It has been an absolute blast hanging out with you guys and discussing all of them as we do for Evan Irwin. Brad Nelson. We tapped all the cards. So you never have to again. Never ever once, even though he got it wrong. Yeah, sure. You have to quit magic because you watch this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm. Don't quit magic. Magic is fun. That's how it works. Anyway, bye, guys. Bye.